Welcome to Time Talks, covering the latest global news from a time perspective. I'm Albert Cho. Xi Jinping's absence at the September G20 summit in New Delhi raises questions about Sino-Indian relations. The Indian Times reports that India is studying responses to a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan after discrete inquiries from the United States. Joining us today are Roger Liu, NSTC Research Institute for Democracy, Society and Emerging Technology Chief Research and Operation Officer. He's also an Associate Professor of uh, Departments of International Politics uh, at the Frame University from India. And the second one is Sana Hashimi. She is a Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation Postdoc Fellow. A very warm welcome to both on the show. Sana, so uh, the first question goes to what is your perspective on India's investigation into possible reaction to Chinese invasion of Taiwan? I think uh, <coughs> what we need to establish is India has always taken Taiwan and China's aggression very, very seriously. Now we are hearing all this in Indian media primarily because India is making it public that India wants to take Taiwan and China's aggression very seriously. And also because it is primarily detrimental to India's interest. It's too early to predict what is India going to do if China decides to invade Taiwan. But I, what I can say with surety that India is definitely thinking of what to do if China decides to invade Taiwan, and India is definitely thinking of a role. Uh, okay, so it, it looks to me that uh, if there's a Taiwan contingency, India's role in Taiwan Strait is not direct. Mm -hmm. But India also, <coughs> on the other hand, has to take care of its border distribute with China. Uh, is this kind of assessment correct? Uh, as in definitely India has been dealing with this China threat, China predicament for more than 70 years now. So this has always been there. But you can't really see India-China dispute in isolation. I feel that it's all connected. Because as uh, Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joseph also said that China is not going to stop at Taiwan. So, and in fact, he has also said that next target could be India. And India is very cognizant of this fact that the boundary dispute is just not merely about terri the territory, the land. It's about China's uh, interest in keeping India preoccupied with the boundary dispute. So I think this is very important for India to realize, and I feel there's a realization that we have to protect Taiwan to also safeguard our own uh, national interest and our own territorial integrity and sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Roger, uh, in terms of this uh, simulation conducted by the Indian Institute about the potential of China's invasion in Taiwan, what does that mean to, to you? I think uh, there, are, there are two aspects that we can look at. First is that India now has been playing more and more important role in the Quad or Quadrilateral uh, Security Dialogue Framework. So uh, a major source of the pressure is from the United States. So U.S. expects India to be a responsible player once should there be a war uh, taking place in Taiwan Strait area. So the Washington D.C. has been asking New Delhi to prepare for that. Secondly is that, um, well, India has been, uh, like Sana has uh, shared with us, uh, India has been thinking uh, strategically regarding um, the import strategic importance of Taiwan Strait near this area as well, because um, uh, the major trade route of India uh, on the sea actually goes through Taiwan Strait. They have been doing a lot of business with uh, countries like Korea and Japan. So um, the Taiwan Strait actually is of India's vital interest as well. So they have to care about that. Mm -hmm. we, we also uh, are wondering, uh, because we knew that one of the traditions of India is land alignment movements, right? That also suggests that India, even though uh, Taiwan and India, we are, are like-minded people in believing in democracy, implementing uh, you know, a democratic system like elections. But also on the other hand, India does have a lot of Thai uh, trades, business, culture, everything uh, with China. So uh, the India's commitment to this uh, Taiwan Strait contingency, does that mean there's any kind of change in this multilateral alliances policy possessed by India? Uh, I don't think so. I think what India has been doing is, is in fact, India is a strong advocate of multi-alignment and strategic autonomy. India has done this with respect to Russia, Ukraine war. And I think uh, the policy is not going to be very different uh, uh, when it comes to China and the U.S. India is definitely working on its defense and security partnership with the U.S. And Taiwan is definitely one of the aspects. Uh, India doesn't really believe in alliances, but I don't think that, and I feel that India also believes that you don't really have to have alliances to do what is right. Mm -hmm. And with respect to Taiwan, what India is trying to do is to have a collective response. 
We have seen that uh, India is a part of very important part of quadrilateral dialogue and Taiwan is definitely discussed within the aspect of quadrilateral dialogue. Then India has a very strong partnership with Japan and we have seen how Japan's position with respect to Taiwan has changed. So India is definitely talking at the bilateral level, at trilateral as well as quadrilateral level uh, with respect to Taiwan. And I do believe even if India isn't talking about Taiwan publicly, it doesn't mean that India is not thinking about Taiwan. Taiwan is very much there and it, Taiwan is at the heart of the Indo-Pacific and there's no denying about that. Mm -hmm. So from uh, Sana's analysis, uh, Taiwan is at the core of the Indo-Pacific, even with regards to uh, India's calculations. What about you? Uh, Non-alignment movements, India, as you uh, experience in India, you as a professor over there, uh, how does it look like to you? Well, non-aligned movement has been in a long tradition of India's foreign policy practice. Just like Sana have said, well, now India has been fine-tuning this a little bit. Mm. Like, um, uh, the term actually is called the multi-level alignment, mm. uh, initiated by Modi especially. So the core of that actually is not to change the principle of non-aligned movement, but de facto, uh, in fact, India has moved closer to the West because there are strategic needs. The first one lies in the northern border with China, it's called LAC, Line of Actual Control. Mm -hmm. India need to counter China to the north, fr uh, from uh, the attack from the north uh, from China. So it has to seek the help from the US, Japan and Australia. So this is the factual need it, it has to do. Secondly, only the Western world and the UNA US can uh, provide some techniques, te uh, te technical uh, uh, skills, or um, some you know uh, benefits from trade away from China. So uh, there is a um, you know actual need that India, the New Delhi, has to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's now move the uh, gear a bit. Uh, uh, talking about uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, especially when considering his absence at the G20 summit earlier, could his deliberate absence be interpreted as a diplomatic message in response to Modi's uh, future U.S. visit? I don't really see it like that. Mm. I just think that, uh, and a lot of media reports were about Xi Jinping snubbing India because he's not going to, because he didn't attend G20 summit. Mm. But how I see it as that uh, Xi Jinping didn't attend uh, the G20 summit in Delhi because first of all, it is in New Delhi. And I uh, don't see that Xi Jinping is welcome in India. Mm. Uh, it's for the very first time that China and Xi Jinping are not really perceived positively and it's a majority view by the Indian public. So he's definitely not welcome in India. Of course, Modi was supposed to welcome Xi Jinping because it was a multilateral intergovernmental summit, but he knew that he's not going to be welcome in India. Mm. Then uh, if you look at the pattern of how Xi Jinping is visiting other countries, we're also seeing that he's only visiting countries uh, that are very welcoming and friendly towards China and Xi Jinping. Mm. He's not really going to places where China's interests are not going to be met. Mm. So G20 is a summit where there are a lot of countries that are not having good relationship with China. Mm. So I think it was not in the interest of Xi Jinping to attend the G20 summit in India. So I would really see it from China's perspective and not as something that was uh, that India was being snubbed uh, by Xi Jinping. Uh, mm. But then if you look at the Belt and Road Summit that's happening right now in China, it's a group of countries that are very friendly towards Xi Jinping and China. You don't really see any Western leader. You don't see India there. Mm. So I think there's a pattern behind uh, where Xi Jinping is going and who is welcome in China. Okay, I remember uh, earlier when Asian, Asian game occurred in, in, uh, in China, uh, the Indian delegation uh, for, for some, some reasons uh, declined to, to participate. So uh, is, is it correct for us to perceive the whole uh, India China kind of uh, uh, dilemma or uh, conflict uh, in the sense that uh, some certain activities still going on, and, and but, but in, in, in appearance only. But in, in app substance, uh, there will be a lot of uh, individual calculation in there. No, definitely, as in channels of communications are open, and India is not really stopping everything with China. That's, hap that's kind of business as usual, as in, in terms of uh, uh, athletes being uh, there. Uh, at games that are hosted in China. But apart from that, it's actually not business as usual because India's foreign minister, mm. Jay Shankar, actually said that the relations are not normal. It's actually abnormal. And in fact, the very reason for uh, some of the Indian athletes not attend uh, the uh, games in China were primarily because 
uh, the athletes were from Arunachal Pradesh that China claims as its own, that's an Indian territory. Mm. And uh, in fact, an Indian minister was supposed to go to China and he had to cancel his visit because of this right. issue. So India is really trying to kind of manage the relationship with China, mm. but uh, there is no positive development that India is seeing from the Chinese mm -hmm. side. So more broadly, uh, Roger, so if the Sino-India relations were to genuinely uh, worsen, what impact might it have on the broader Asian geopolitical landscape, you think? Um, well, the worsening of the Indian-China relations has been going for years. So we are going to measure how bad it's going to be. Uh, so this is the first thing. And the second thing is that, um, well, actually during the G20 presidency held by India for the past year, well, India has been trying very carefully to manage uh, well the relationship with China because it doesn't want China to be a rule breaker, you know, because Modi has to be the hero on the diplomatic stage of India. So he has to attract most of the highlights. Mm. But um, after G20, actually, um, I, I, I think, I predict that the relationship will go back to before, mm. uh, which is the post Govan Valley situation that India and China will be on at least a competitive uh, mode, if not the rivalry or even conflictual mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let's kind of talk about the earlier news about three retired Indian Army, Navy, and Air Force generals, uh, their visit to Taiwan. Uh, raises the question of whether the diplomatic uh, uh, ties between Taiwan and India has subtly advanced. Uh, is this visit unprecedented? Uh, maybe it goes to Sana first. So what, how significant is this visit of retired India high-ranking military officers uh, to Taiwan? Yeah, I think I'll first highlight why the visit was important and it got a lot of traction in the media. Um, I don't really see it as an Indian government sending a signal uh, because uh, first of all, uh, I think it was a private visit by the three defense chiefs, but it got a lot of attention primarily because uh, they were the three chiefs regarding the Galwan clashes and they played uh, an important role during that time when the India-China relationship started to deteriorate. Uh, but I do feel that um, I, I didn't really, because specifically it was the G20 time and India was definitely busy with the G20 summit, so I don't really see it as a signal to China. And I don't see that India has been trying to send a signal to China because India has been very clear with its uh, policy towards China as well as Taiwan. Uh, they were on a visit to have think tank consultation and this is very normal between India and Taiwan. Mm. Uh, and in fact, but if you look at how they perceived Taiwan and how they interacted in Taiwan, that actually shows that how, uh, of course, when you're a part of the government, uh, because of the limitations and absence of diplomatic relationship, there is a kind of limitation how much they could talk about when they are serving in an official uh, capacity. But if you look at them after retirement, they, you would actually see that the perception of Taiwan is very, very positive. Mm and how they decided to come to Taiwan and talk to the think tank community and talk to the officials in Taiwan, it says a lot about how Taiwan is generally perceived among uh, such high-ranking officials in India. Okay, Roger, um, to your knowledge, has Taiwan previously uh, contacted India for military coordination or any kind of form uh, betwe in between the two countries? Well, I think, well, uh, military collaboration is something which is usually considered to be confidential. So if there is mm. anything going on, maybe mm. we, we don't have much information about that. But um, well, there are potentials because now India has been using more and more U.S. made weapons. Mm. So if India keep introducing uh, the U.S. platforms like mm. P-8I, which is the um, anti-submarine uh, warfare plan, a a airplane, mm. and uh, uh, H-64 Apache um, um, attack, uh, helicopter. If there are more and more weapon systems like that, we can expect that India and China would have, you know, more opportunity to talk and work, even to coordinate with each other in security and military affairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there are many other things that we can look at in the Indian-Taiwan relations. Uh, not only the weapons or not only the security, military affairs, but India actually care more about the technological collaborations, mm -hmm. like they want to introduce um, semiconductor manufacturing process uh, skills from Taiwan. They want to uh, introduce more um, ICT or uh, information and communication technology skills from Taiwan as well. So this is something that we should also look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Actually, there is not only a political military conflict between China and India, and also trade war, a potential trade war. Actually, there is a uh, trade relations. Uh, India has taken significant steps to initiate frequent anti dumping investigation against China. In just 10 days at the end of September, India uh, launched as many as 14 item anti-dumping investigations against China, sparking uh, market uh, concerns about a new trade war. These 14 anti-dumping investigations cover various Chinese products, including software block, thermos bottles, fasteners, uh, epicolo hydrant, digital printing plates, roller chains, transparent glass paper films, among others. It's noteworthy that some of these investigations, such as uh, po uh, polyvinyl chloride, Pasta resin uh, and digital pen, uh, printing plates also involve Taiwan. So Taiwan is not out of the game. Uh, in at least 10 out of the 14 investigations, China is the primary target uh, with no involvement of other countries. So my first question goes to uh, Roger. Could you start by giving an overview of the historical uh, background of India-China trade relations? Mm -hmm. Well, India and China's trade relationship has been uh, in an unbalanced situation which means that India actually has the deficit from doing business with China because India keeps importing um, machineries or high technological um, machines from China while China uh, keeps importing iron ores or some raw materials from India. So China earns much more from India than the other side. Mm -hmm. So India has been trying to address this uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, if we go back to the, um, the trade restrictions that India has been initiated this time, we can find that these are not major uh, items. Mm -hmm. These are just items used by most of the small and um, uh, medium enterprises. So I think this is just like a microcosm or a symbol mm -hmm. that India, the government of India is going to take uh, larger offensive in trade towards China after G20 now. Mm. Because, um, well, the, the major um, conflict in uh, trade between India and China actually don't lie in these smaller items. Mm. They focus more on, the, the government of India actually wants to address in the bigger picture of the structural imbalance between India and China's trade. Mm. So I think for the future we will see more uh, WTO complaints that India initiated uh, towards China for the future after, especially G20. So what about you, Sana? Uh, is India's strategy, uh, you know, it looks to me still try to decouple with China instead mm -hmm. of uh, what the United States does, the risking. Uh, what's your evaluation of the situation? Uh, well, no, definitely, as in I feel that India is still uh, very much on its initial policy of decoupling and it hasn't really shifted to de-risking as the US and uh, Europe. Mm. And because this is primarily the India is very sure that China, the way China does business is not fair. It wants to have countries' dependence on it primarily so that it could use a trade and investment as a weapon or a tool against these countries. Mm -hmm. So India has been very, very sure about this. One of the reasons why India has been a kind of a, a rule setter when it comes to uh, taking actions against China. India was the first country to ban TikTok. India is actually scrutinizing Chinese investment. And a lot of uh, FDI applications that have come out of China have been rejected by Ministry of Commerce and Industry in India. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in one year, only three applications were accepted. So I think India is the only major country that is actually just not talking about restricting Chinese actions, activities in the also country, but also taking actions. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very important. And of course, as Roger also mentioned about the huge trade deficit between India and China, that's still a huge, huge problem. And it is primarily that India is dependent on China on the raw material, as in over the decades, China actually established itself as a manufacturing hub of the world. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of countries that are dependent on China and there's, an, there's no way out. But India is actually taking actions, and if we kind of examine what India has been doing, I definitely see there is positive outlook, and I'm actually positive that India might be able to diversify mm -hmm. and reduce its dependence on China. Mm -hmm. So what about the United States? Uh, in the middle of this India-China tr trade conflict, uh, what's your observation of the United States? Uh, does the United States want not only India you know, join a quad uh, framework with the US, but also in a trade 
uh, war with the United States, even though we know that Biden kind of back up a bit, uh, soften uh, his attitude towards China, especially uh, he uh, several times emphasized the importance of de-risking but not decoupling from China. So do you think that India would uh, need to follow U.S. steps uh, in, the, in the instruction of the United States, maybe, Roger? Well, I think India, uh, the relation, the trade relationship between India and the United States is different from that one from between India and China. Mm. Because firstly, um, India has been having surplus mm. uh, through the bilateral trade with the U.S. Mm. And uh, India and the U.S. is not in a competitive uh, situation. So India, uh, actually India has been receiving uh, technology logical transfer from in, uh, from the US for the especially the past few years. Mm. So US has been sub, uh, supplying India with uh, the weapon systems, uh, the high technology and you know there are a bunch of uh, Indian um, engineers working in uh, places like Silicon Valley. Mm. So India has been uh, receiving a lot of remittance from the US. So this is very different and now in the current stage especially India needs the United States uh, for uh, to help it um, grow in economic economics, and uh, also India needs the uh, uh, security uh, supports from the U.S. as well. So, in the general picture, actually, I, I think for the years to come, we will see closer and closer Indian uh, American cooperation vis-à-vis -vis China. Right, but I meant, um, would you say the United States want India to decouple economically from China, or maybe that's not in, in the interest of the United States to think so? I don't think the U.S. will have much to say to tell India what to do and what not to do, because mm -hmm. like you said, uh, India has long tradition of non line movement mm -hmm. and strategic autonomy. Actually, strategic autonomy is towards the U.S. Mm -hmm. from 1970s. Mm -hmm. So um, India has been acting on its own national interest. Mm -hmm. And this in national interest will coincidentally um, match with U.S. national interest as well. So mm -hmm. that's why India and the U.S. can work closely together for mm -hmm. now. All right, Sana, more specifically, uh, so uh, any kind of items in of, of, of the top of the head, does the U.S. compete with China for any market share in India? Or on the other hand, can India offer any goods or service to the United States that except for uh, 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 Roger just mentioned those items? Uh, uh, First of all, I would also like to add what Roger said. I mm. do feel that uh, you asked about what, uh, as in if India could learn from the US about de-risking or mm. the debate about de versus with decoupling. I feel that if uh, someone has to learn anything about how to deal with China, is the US and US should learn from India. As in US is still debating about uh, uh, TikTok, mm. but India was the first country and India has been banning Chinese app for uh, four years now. So I, yeah, then, uh, but I feel the trade uh, uh, nature of India, US, India, China, as Roger mentioned, is very, very different. So of course, technology is something that both India and uh, the US are really trying to kind of get away from the US, uh, from China. Mm. But apart from that, I feel we need to talk about other countries as well. It's just not about India, US. So we need to have alternative global supply chain. We need to have uh, other countries involved. And one of the mm. things that the US, India, and in fact, the Quad countries did was to introduce IPEF. Mm. And there is a very important trade pillar within that. So I think in my opinion, what is more important is just to not look at uh, this changing global trade landscape through bilateral, uh, uh, in, in a bilateral nature, but primarily to include like-minded countries and to find a common solution. Because the common target is China's uh, economic coercive activities. Mm. So I, I, I believe that in this context, Taiwan also, Japan also, these countries play a very, very important role. Roger, uh, you as a uh, scholar in India, working and teaching there, uh, as you observe, do you think the anti-China sentiments in India is like widespread, or you think that's more like a, a, a overstatement uh, from overseas perspective? There's no very strong anti-China sentiments among the people, mm. because most of the people don't know much about China. Mm. They just know some, uh, they have some impressions regarding China. Uh, for example, well, China is usually described as a backstabber because what it has done to India after the uh, 1962 Sino-Indian War. Uh, the Indian people generally think that uh, we've been very good to China, but China has been very bad to us. Mm -hmm. So they betrayed us. They do something bad in our back. 
And for the higher um, echelon of the, uh, in the society, for the richer people, they actually don't care about China very much because they are eyeing on the West mm -hmm. and the United States. Mm -hmm. So China is not very important, especially, I mean, uh, unless to some specific portion of the middle class. Mm -hmm. But these are the very minority of the people among the whole population. So I would say that the general atmosphere in the Indian society towards China is indifferent. Mm -hmm. They don't okay. think China is very important, but they think that China is a looming large threat in national security and trade. Okay, Sana, would you uh, conclude uh, with a couple of or three sentences at best uh, to describe the Sino-Indian uh, relations and where we still can see a role Taiwan play in the picture? Um, I do feel that uh, relations are not business as usual. There is uh, deterioration in the relationship. We are not sure how the future of India-China relationship is going to be, and it totally depends on how and what China does. I do agree with Roger that uh, uh, I can't really say, of course, there is negative perception about China, but I do agree with him that China is, China threat looms large, and there is this uh, perception among Indians that the China threat is the number one threat for a lot of Indians. And of course, I do really don't like to link uh, India-Taiwan relationship with India-China relationship because Taiwan is viewed positively. But of course, this entire sentiment that uh, China is being aggressive to both India and Taiwan at the same time, and we need to tackle the same kind of threat, and we are friendly nation. As in there, this perception among Indians that Taiwan is not so different from us. So I think this similarity and this warmth towards Taiwan is something that is newfound, and I would say that China factor is definitely one of the major reasons behind that. Okay, Sana and Raja, thank you for the insightful analysis. Thank okay. you. In this episode, we discussed India's potential response to a Chinese invasion in Taiwan. We also delved into the latest developments as India initiated trade investigations involving China. Feel free to leave us a comment on our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. See you soon.